agile coaching round table uh, today is the 15th session and uh, topic for today uh, is uh, difference between project manager and scrum master and uh, the reason why i picked up this topic is uh, many uh, of us have reached or have this confusion as in uh, is scrum master similar to project manager or is scrum master same as project manager or uh, if at all there is a difference what is the difference and uh, what are its roles uh, each each of its uh, uh, roles and responsibilities and uh, if if we get into this uh, role of a, a scrum master or project manager then uh, how do we go about and uh, maybe uh, what is that uh, underlying differences between both the roles so many people have reached out to us uh, me and vivek and uh, we thought that uh, why not just uh, cover this uh, topic and uh, more so because now uh, you know that a lot of um, uh, attrition is going around and people are like just uh, switching uh, jobs and they want to get into this role of a scrum master Pre previously they were into project manager and vice versa or maybe they were working uh, in the uh, traditional waterfall model and now uh, as a project manager now uh, want to work as a agile project manager or scrum master whatever could be the reason so we thought let's uh, try to cover this topic so that all of us understand what uh, the differences are obviously you will get a lot of stuff when you uh, google out you would see the uh, differences uh, or maybe what are the roles and responsibilities are but i thought to give it a different touch or maybe try to uh, bring in a different perspective to both the roles uh, so on that note uh, let's get started and uh, before we start anything what i would like uh, you all to uh, just come up with or maybe uh, tell me is uh, can you guys uh, type it down what are the responsibilities of a project manager i mean what do you think are the responsibilities of project manager are are uh, those same as scrum master and if no then can you give me uh, the uh, key responsibilities of project manager in the chat maybe so that from there we can take it ahead anyone would like to give it a try i am also in the meantime trying to <clears throat> present the screen as well or else if you want to uh, speak out that is also fine i mean it's not that none of us should be talking or only i would be talking if you can just give out that uh, over i mean if you can just speak out or even if you can come on video that is even better the more uh, interaction the better uh, the session goes actually okay vivek has mentioned uh, sow and contract part all right uh, shailesh has mentioned project manager is handling taking care of the project however sm uh, doesn't need to take care of the project okay anything else defining main objectives by santosh people management by vivek yes uh, jai if you want to just talk about i think budgeting budgeting yes true anything else uh, anyone would want to add i do see sai dharmik is uh, typing okay santosh has mentioned project planning 
Sai Dharmik has mentioned PM takes care of all the uh, related activities from project initiation to project closure. Absolutely correct. I mean, whatever people have mentioned is absolutely correct. Planning and execution as well by Santosh. Yes. That is true. <clears throat> project related meetings with the stakeholders is taken care by P uh, project manager. Yes. And now uh, can we uh, talk about uh, responsibilities of Scrum Master? If you want to just speak up, uh, please, I would encourage people to uh, speak up rather than uh, typing. It would be like more interactive. When we have conversation. Addressing impediments. Yes. And anything else? Making sure that uh, the team is on track to or um, on track to uh, on track to achieve the sprint goal. True. That's true. Uh, once once the project milestones are uh, defined, so Scrum Master takes care of the execution process uh, in terms of whether which kind of uh, agile methodology works for the project. So project manager takes care of entire milestone level tracking, uh, like uh, for example, it's, it's a kind of like analysis, design, execution, um, during execution, monitoring and closure part. So wherein uh, Scrum Master will go into like uh, defining the uh, work items into a like. The, at the team level, Scrum Master takes care of uh, breakdowning the milestone level objectives into a lower line of work items, and uh, he takes care of the execution process at the team level. Wherein the project manager takes care of at the project milestone level. So that's the difference between project and Scrum Master. All right. And I'm making sure yes, team is abided with agile values and principles. Yes. And also the main responsibility is to make team self organizing. Exactly. True. And also Vivek has mentioned implementation of Scrum as per Scrum. All right. OK, I think most of us uh, are aligned on what uh, the roles and responsibilities of uh, both a project manager and a Scrum master uh, are. Uh, Let's see uh, how we can uh, further understand uh, the core essence or uh, core differences of uh, both the, the roles. So wherever you feel that you would uh, want to add anything or you would want to uh, uh, put across any point, please uh, feel free to uh, do that. And uh, whatever I have put uh, put up is what I have interpreted and what uh, Vivek thought that uh, the uh, responsibilities are. Uh, we could be, uh, I mean, right also or wrong also, it's just a perspective, right? And also, there could be a lot more which we might have not covered. What we have done is of all the uh, uh, responsibilities that uh, we have talked about right now, we thought. Uh, we would be um, uh, picking and choosing the top responsibilities and trying to uh, understand uh, what are those. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, try to do the slideshow. Let me know if you are able to see my screen. And I yes, we can see. Thank you. Also, turn off my camera so that the, I don't face any problem due to network. All right. Yeah, so let's talk about project manager first. Uh, as most of us have already covered uh, about stakeholder management, project planning, staffing, uh, budgeting, estimation, allocation, change management, and deliverables, taking care of the deliverables. Someone mentioned that uh, about the milestones, right? So taking care of the deliverables. So these are all the uh, typical roles and responsibilities of a project manager that we thought that are very uh, uh, 
uh, generic or maybe these these are the key roles and responsibilities okay whereas uh, when we uh, come to scrum master what we what thought uh, are the key roles and responsibilities or uh, the generic ones so uh, when we uh, talk about scrum master it is about enabling encouraging empowering collaborating uh, cause removal of impediments uh, as i mentioned uh, teach scrum values as santosh mentioned direct team to focus towards the sprint goal as i mentioned about this so if you see the differences there is nowhere like anything uh, related to management for scrum master right uh, when you see in the project manager there is lot of management change management or uh, stakeholder management project planning so what a project manager is trying to do whatever uh, the uh, the uh, project work is he is trying to manage the team he is trying to kind of uh, manage the project so more most of the uh, pro project manager's role is related to project right it is confined to project the context is project it is not related to people right though people management is also a responsibility of a project manager but when we talk about people management uh, the responsibility is towards staffing right here we have mentioned staffing staffing means staffing means how many team members would be required for that particular uh, project or uh, what would be the duration and all of that so it is regarding staffing and not related to people management so if you see uh, there is nowhere uh, mentioned anything about people over here but when you come to scrum master we talk about enablement or encouragement or empowerment or collaboration obviously these are all the uh, behavioral uh, or a people management or human centric uh, factors that scrum master uh, takes care of he does not uh, worry about deliverables when i said doesn't worry about obviously whatever we are trying to do is to deliver value to the customer but to enable team to deliver value in uh, in a right way and a right value is what scrum master helps team on so wherever you see about the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master it is about people management it is about uh, human centric factors rather than uh, managing uh, the project it is about people so that is what uh, our uh, scrum value uh, agile value also talks about right uh, individuals and interaction over processes and tools so this is where our scrum master uh, or we as a scrum masters should ensure that we are concentrating on people more rather than processes or managing the project and all of that <clears throat> all right so what i have done is now we know that these are all the key responsibilities or top uh, few responsibilities of project manager and scrum master are so what i try to do is let's understand what is the uh, logic behind both the roles okay and why uh, uh, have we uh, defined two different uh, roles over here obviously you, all of us uh, are clear now that um, the uh, both there is a lot of difference between both the roles right i mean though there are similarities uh, there there are differences as well since there are two different roles created obviously there would be differences we cannot uh, say that uh, no uh, our project manager is a scrum master and scrum master is a project manager no these are two different roles defined as per the framework that we are working on since we have these two roles different roles there are differences so if someone asks you first thing we we may want to just talk about or maybe even in interviews people uh, get this question what is the difference between scrum master and uh, project manager is there any difference if yes what are those differences so this is how we can talk about but to even to uh, get that logical understanding of both the roles why do we have these roles so let us see 
why we have these roles what are the categorization of these roles and also before we move on to next i would like to talk about over here is there is no mention of deliverables over here for scrum master scrum master is not responsible for taking care of deliverables like we have for project manager over here right scrum master is not responsible for taking care of the deliverables if at all you are taking care of deliverables or if you are uh, kind of uh, overlapping with any of these uh, cards right then you are playing a role of an agile project manager and not a scrum master even though you would be covering the uh, the scrum aspects or touch basing on scrum aspects like teaching scrum values or uh, causing removal of impediments directing uh, team to focus towards the sprint goal but if you are taking uh, working with any of these allocation estimation budgeting change management deliverables whatever it could be then you are playing playing a role of a scrum uh, you are playing a role of an agile project manager and not a uh, scrum master this fundamental difference even vivek and i have uh, realized after we uh, worked as an agile project manager thinking that we were working as a scrum master so we uh, i mean that is uh, a story for another day to discuss our experience but we realized late in the game that was we are not playing role of a scrum master it's an agile project manager role now it's right time for us to concentrate completely on scrum master and then take up the uh, role of a scrum master is when we thought of thinking in that direction initially when you take up uh, the role of a scrum master you won't be able to understand the difference because you don't know what right or what wrong is i'm not saying that playing a role of a uh, project manager is a wrong thing but what i'm saying is uh, you, i mean you are playing a role of a project manager and not a scrum master you would understand this difference after you spend a considerable a considerable amount of time as a agile project manager or a scrum master is when you will identify all these differences is when you will understand what are the anti patterns initial at initial level it is very difficult to understand you will just go with the flow thinking that you are playing a role of a scrum master so uh, just as a key uh, thing uh, i would like to mention is as a scrum master you are uh, able to, you you should be concentrating on incul inculcating uh, the scrum values and agile values and principles uh, this 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 and most of a people uh, or human centric factors and not anything related to deliverables management technical things and so on i'm not saying that scrum master shouldn't be technical uh, person it is at an advantage if you have the technical skills but not a mandatory thing all right any uh, questions or any points uh, so far before we move any points or anything from anyone Uh, i have one question ramesh yes okay. yeah uh, recently uh, i have you're not audible uh, mohan i'm yeah, not I'm more audible is for ramesh for everyone yes you are now uh, i'm audible yes yes you are so at one of the location i found that uh, when i was appearing for scrum master uh, so i got the jd for technical program manager and at the time was i was unable to uh, relate uh, scrum master with the technical program manager okay so how can uh, so, we uh, yes yes so uh, i would like to ask that question to you how did you uh, understand it is of a technical program manager and not of a, a scrum master how did you uh, understand what were yeah, the in the jd it has mentioned that Uh, that uh, three to four different projects will be there, where whatever the different required resources are there, or in concern to any technical upgradation, the JD has mentioned that thing. That uh, I need to take care three four different projects and providing the different resources, but it uh, won't be the scrum master thing. It's a different thing. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. 
yeah so in that way uh, when today we are taking a topic for the discussion uh, project manager versus scrum master so, so how the technical program manager we can differentiate in this case or where he will be suitable right so one thing if you are working or i mean if you are applying for any job or attending any uh, are just planning to attend any interview right for a scrum master so one way to differentiate uh, the uh, responsibility differences is uh, through jd that is the place wherein you will understand the crux of the ask right i mean whatever that organization is uh, asking uh, from this role or what is that they are expecting that is the first level uh, uh, at which you can uh, differentiate those uh, difference uh, differentiate between both the roles second level is uh, during your interview whenever uh, you attend an interview and um, first round is always a technical round right even in the technical round if you find that uh, differences right with the uh, interviewer is not asking you questions related to scrum master but is most uh, is mostly asking you uh, or playing around a project manager role or any technical manager role right and uh, clearly he would not emphasize on scrum master he would be asking technical questions that have you uh, done budgeting have you done uh, costing uh, have you done uh, allocation and they will uh, typically say resource allocation and not staffing and that is something i would uh, really uh, pity or maybe i don't uh, relate to that when someone says resources it, we are not resources right we are people so if you want to talk about uh, people either you say people management or you say staffing and not resource allocation or resource management right the resources are non living things we are living human beings right so these are the kind of i mean uh, the way people treat you or talk in the interview you you can understand the culture of that organization or that project to be uh, uh, to be specific so uh, the expectations i mean they'll ask such questions have you done the budgeting have you done costing how would you do that resource allocation and then they will try to uh, ask you whether you know java whether you know dot net try to uh, check how would you give solutions when team is stuck uh, uh, when uh, they are stuck with some code or technical issue how would you resolve all those things so this is the second level where you can uh, understand the differences because i mean how would you uh, resolve impediment of a team is a different thing as a scrum master but how would you give technical solution is a different thing right so these are the differences uh, or these are the striking ways wherein you can catch uh, whether it is a role of a technical manager or whether it's a role of a project manager or it is a role of a scrum master and when it is a technical program manager so they would be typically asking you questions uh, related uh to managing an entire account or a program like uh how many teams are you handling uh how are you resolving uh how how are you resolving uh, that uh, conflicts or they will ask you how are you uh, sending out the status report what are or are the reports that you send out to the client how do you do the stakeholder management so these are the uh, some of the questions that you might encounter uh for a technical program manager interview i have not attended uh, the technical program manager though but i understand the uh, responsibility since i have seen a technical program manager in my project and project managers in uh, in my project as well so these are the differences during the interview but after i mean it could be possible that uh, interview uh, would be uh, conducted by uh uh someone from scrum uh, uh, scrum or agile fraternity but when you join uh, the project the scene would be completely different even then uh, you won't be able to understand uh, or uh, gauge at the uh, initial level but as you pa uh, pass or spend some time in the project is when you can understand and when uh, when you uh, understand the difference that you have joined there as a scrum master and you are asked to do a project manager or a program manager or technical manager role it is your duty to call it out saying that these are not 
the responsibilities of a scrum master and uh, educate them that these are not the responsibilities and instead you would be taking care of these things and avoid doing these things and when you just give up i mean this is a key right I and mean, whenever you give out a problem statement or call out anything people would expect you to give solution also what otherwise if you just go with a problem statement what they will say is no for us this is what it is this is how we work and all of that instead you can say that someone from identify someone from the uh, existing team member and ask them to uh, take care of the uh, deliverables or whatever anti patterns you see you try to portray that way that these are the responsibilities that i would be taking care as a scrum master and rest we'll have to figure out i mean who would be doing that and how can we handle those uh, things this is how you can differentiate but if you feel that uh, it's your, i mean it's you have tried all the ways and you're not uh, able to convey or not convince and you are forced to do if someone is asking uh, you to do something forcefully and which is not as per uh, what it should be then only way is to either quit or maybe try to convince them these are the only two options uh, that uh, we should be taking up but not suffer and get stuck with that yes thank you ramya all right so let's uh, move uh, to next so as i have mentioned i have tried to categorize uh, all of uh, i mean both the roles into why what and how so uh, what what happens is whenever we try to understand anything or whenever we try to solve any problem or uh, pick up any uh, anything uh, or any action or any activity the fundamental question one must try to understand is why are we doing it why is it more important or why is it required instead of understanding how part and what part try to understand why part and same is what we as scrum masters should uh, encourage team to do instead of starting blindly on the uh, sprint uh, deliverables or, or on the sprint backlog first encourage them to understand why are we delivering uh, something instead of uh, just figuring out how why is it so important to the client so in the similar lines i try to put up why uh, the uh, wh questions uh, in uh, as a categorization okay so first is let's understand why we have these uh, roles right so let's try to understand what is the objective behind both the roles first uh, coming to project manager project manager is about planning project manager role is about planning controlling reporting and monitoring planning about the project controlling the project reporting about the project and monitoring the project status everything is about project so it is more of command and control the objective is to ha have the command and control and manage the project so the context over here is the project okay whereas when it, when it comes to the scrum master it is about enabling empowering uh, ensuring uh, that there is a transparency and giving out that safe environment ensuring the psychological safety to the team members that is the objective of a uh, scrum master's role to enable team to empower team to create that transparency and to uh, give or provide that uh, psychological safe environment so that uh, they feel safe to work with each other they trust each other this is the objective of the scrum master here it is about command and control it is about enable and empower it is more of a kind of a, a leader it is more of a manager this is what a fundamental uh reason or objective or why do we have these two roles so whenever someone asks you 
why do we have these two different roles? This is what it is. We want someone to plan about the project, uh, have this reporting, monitoring, controlling. Someone within the context of a project he is the person who is uh, who is a uh, project manager, but who is uh, someone who is uh, more of enabling, empowering, uh, ensuring that team is working uh, with the safe environment uh, is what a scrum master is uh, brought into. OK, so the, this is the objective of both the roles, but if you have a project manager role as a scrum master. I mean, if a, a scrum master is asked to do a project manager role within uh, agile uh, project uh, management, then we would be doing wrong because the essence of uh, the objective of this role would not be met by project manager. If you replace let me put it this way if you replace a scrum master with the project manager thinking that a project manager should be able to do a scrum master role no it won't be possible unless that person understands the perspective of this role and the objective of this role any uh, points or any questions in this anything that anyone would like to add Hello, Ramya. Mohan here. Yes, ma'am. So in future, uh, can a Scrum Master think uh, uh, he can play a role of Agile project manager in coming time based yes. on the experience? Yes, yes. So it's a, okay. so it really depends upon our uh, aspirations also, right? If someone doesn't want to uh, kind of uh, work or restrict himself just to a scrum master role, but he wants to play around as a project manager and take care of uh, project management uh, related responsibility. Definitely he can uh, play a role of an agile project manager. So it really depends upon the aspirations, what you want to do. Having said that, the uh, as we have already seen the differences, there would be differences between the responsibilities and there would be differences. Uh, I mean, there would be some differences between the traditional project manager responsibilities and Scrum uh, and uh, Agile project management, uh, Agile project managers responsibility. I mean, the way you so, budget your traditional projects would be different than the way you budget uh, or plan your Agile projects. Uh, move on to uh, to next. OK, now uh, talking about what part? I mean, what is the scope or boundaries or accountabilities of both the roles? What is that uh, project manager does and what is that scrum master does? Again, if you see, you see a similar pattern. For project manager, it is about scope, schedule, staff and budget. Because he is playing around, uh, around project uh, per se or playing around project, uh, the project con uh, context, the uh, scope remains within the uh, project bond boundaries. The scope is still a project. He is not worried as we spoke about the human centric factors, right? He is not worried on that. His main focus is how a team is delivering within the scope, schedule, budget and staff. This is the uh, scope of a scrum master or this is the uh, boundaries in within which as uh, sorry, uh, scope of a project manager. These are the boundaries within which a project manager plays or these are the accountabilities. And now coming to Scrum Master's scope, boundaries or accountabilities, right? Uh, why I have mentioned accountabilities? Because as per the latest Scrum Guide, Scrum Master is not a role anymore. It is an accountability. That is the reason why uh, not only Scrum Master, the development team or product owner, these are all accountabilities now. These are no more roles. OK, so that is the reason why we, we have mentioned accountabilities over here. So what uh, what is the scope boundaries or what are the accountabilities of Scrum Master? The uh, first one is help discover agile mindset. Here we are helping them to discover the agility in them. We are not saying that we are introducing agile mindset to them. People are already agile. It's just that we are helping them to discover or bring in that agility 
out of them. We as a scrum masters, we are not teaching them what agility is. We are just helping them discover. And how we do that through uh, agile values and principles or scrum values or uh, teaching, coaching, whatever we may want to call. Second is uh, second accountability is to ensure that team uh, is constantly improving. So constant improvement. Third is guide team. Guide team towards the right direction to achieve the sprint goal. Fourth is organizational level contribution. So even if you check the scrum guide uh, in the uh, responsibilities of a scrum master, you would mention uh, you would uh, see teach uh, scrum uh, or uh, agility to organization. So the scope or boundaries of scrum master is not uh, limited to a project or a program. So it is at an organization level. It is uh, there are no boundaries, so to say. So it is across uh, spread that agility across the organization, not just to the team or not just to the program, but to the organization. Whereas the project uh, manager. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I got one question. Yes. You are talking about uh, the Scrum Master responsibility. So one of the, my friend is working for the Scrum Master in Deloitte. For one guy in come and say my laptop is not working. It is responsibility of the Scrum Master role repair. It is a responsibility of the Scrum Master or it will be laptop issues or something. Anything. No. So what happens is people are not understanding what do you mean by uh, impediment? It's not doing for any delivery last two days. You go and ask what is the reason. He's saying simply saying my laptop is not working and the scrum master is responsible to work with the IT team, resolve my issue. He is saying he, he, what is it is responsible. I have the doubt it is come under the scrum master role. Right. Uh, we have to understand what is the impediment over here, right? So if it is an impediment towards your uh, your uh, deliverables, right, is something in the purview of the scrum master. So these are the logistic things, right? Logistic things are something uh, which have uh, which people can take care of themselves. We are talking about self organizing teams, right? So if something uh, is not working or if if something is broken, so one should not sit for scrum master to resolve because we are not doing. I mean, team members are not doing any favor by doing that work, right? It's not a duty of a scrum master to go get tea or go fix uh, the logistic issue or go get marker. These are not things that are a responsibility or a blocker or maybe impediments, right? So we have to understand what are our uh, impediments or what is the scope in which we are working at the most what we can do is uh, as a scrum master one can go and tell okay this is so and so uh, person or this is the point of contact for you who can help you fix this issue go and talk to that person this is also navigating through the impediment right we are not saying that we are resolving a problem we are saying we are causing uh, removal of impediments. The most experienced person, so I am a, he is a junior scrum master, but he is saying I can't go and say to him, but he is not obey my word. He was working in company for more than 10 years. He's a manager category. I am a junior uh, role. So whatever I say as a scrum master, the guy is not obey the order. So how can I handle this issue? He's saying it is a scrum master role. Uh, laptop repairing is a scrum master. He's simply saying uh, not do any work. He's a most senior person in the scrum. Right. The first thing I would like to uh, correct is that we don't want to obey or we don't want to order someone. We have to explain it to them. That is one thing. Second thing is, as I mentioned, if uh, someone is relying on a scrum master to uh, get their laptop repaired. As I mentioned, what at the most you can do is you can direct that person towards the right uh, uh, point of contact. Uh, here, if it is uh, IT guy, you can tell them that, OK, you can uh, reach out to so and so person. He should be able to help you out. This is where your boundaries are. It's not that it's your duty to ensure that uh, you, it's your duty to uh, repair the laptop or get that repair, uh, get that laptop repaired. So you you can just 
follow follow up with that person whether issue is resolved or not but it is the individual's responsibility equally to get that uh, laptop repaired right because as i mentioned that person is not doing a favor uh, on scrum master by uh, doing uh, a sprints work or whatever work in a project right so this is how you can say you can navigate or uh, direct that person to right point of contact and ask them to get that fixed and tell them that if it is uh, related to a uh, 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 impediment related to a sprint goal is where a scrum master can help otherwise logistic getting a tea or getting a marker or getting the laptop repaired is not a scrum master's role for that matter even if you tell the project manager he is not going to get uh, that laptop fixed right so if you have to just think about uh, that way even a project manager would would not do if a, a scrum master is a leader who serves that doesn't mean that he is your servant or going to get uh, all those things for you so this is the fundamental difference yeah. a scrum master should understand and he should educate others as well over here yeah in, in simple terms uh, what ramya have explained is scrum master play a role as a teacher here sometimes we need to teach people it's not always coach guide mentor the, here this scrum master should able to take a stance of teaching and we should need we should teach those people and we should make them understand the things right absolutely correct yeah and uh, please do not think that someone is very senior or junior we don't have such hierarchy in uh, in agile everyone is equal everyone is called as development team there is no senior developer junior developer or uh, senior solution architect no everyone is treated as a development team everyone is equal there is no hierarchy whatsoever so that is where that openness comes from right so you should be courageous enough to put across your point in a subtle way so that the other person also understands or takes uh, in a right way okay thanks from you sorry i got one more question so he is at for for the for he is uh, as per the scrum grand list it is some nine members as a scrum it is not cross more than 9 to 10 members am i right so in this team we uh, there are 14 members so you go and say to your manager as per scrum guidelines saying more than it is not cross more than but manager is not listen i i got i can't attend a two more meeting in a day it is not so he is not obey to the scrum master the team is continue with the 14 member is it correct because the manager is saying i can't attend two meeting daily scrum meeting okay uh, vivek would you like to take this up or Vivek, you are not audible if you are speaking. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, please? So, one of my friend is working for one of the MNC company as a Scrum Master. They have got fourteen members in his team. Okay. As per the Scrum guidelines, saying it is a more as per nine to ten members maximum one Scrum team. Yes. in his team there are 14 members he go and say to his manager as per the scrum guidelines saying it is not cross more than 9 members the, but project manager saying i can't attend more than two interviews in i can't attend more than two two meeting in a per day it is a waste of my time i can attend only one meeting so he is mingle to the two scrum team he is conducting we don't have any deviation there are scrum teams of 14 members so manager is not listening to the scrum master role he is saying i, I don't have time attend for the two meetings right how to handle the he is saying yes. yes yes manager is optional he is not mandatory for the daily scrum calls but but he is attending the daily scrum meeting he want to know the status so he is eagerly attend the daily scrum meeting now the question is in reality if really wants to know the status of it he has to attend otherwise Now it's up to him, using his priorities. He doesn't want to attend, and one of the, all the details means that's where this kind of frictions coming with us for the management and to the scrum master roles. That's yes, where I we are doing. I can simply we, answer this question, uh, Narayan. Sorry to interrupt, Chandra. Yeah, the current situation I had uh, in my organization, 
we had uh, same 14 member team. So I propose to have two teams, two cohesive scrum teams, so that the focus uh, will be more and the openness, respect, everything, all the values and principles play a vital role when we have small teams. When we have large teams, the transparency, inspection, and adoption will go for a toss. So that is the reason where I've proposed two cohesive teams. And when you talk about meetings, it is up to the team and we can have a discussion with the teams and the managers or product owners and we can come to a conclusion that what meetings we need to have in common what meetings we can have separate meetings that kind of healthy discussion we can have within the team and accordingly we can have we can set those meetings okay okay but um, so, the manager point of view is right, right. The 14, all are doing the same kind of the activity. That's in the 14 uh, members. Uh, when all teams. are doing same, when we are dividing the teams, uh -huh. even though everyone is working on same project, same project, uh -huh. everyone will not be working on same task, on same feature, right? So when we are dividing teams, we divide teams that we will divide in such a way that to have focus on the work, to have the separate focus on the work and to maintain the transparency for better inspection and adoption, we divide the teams. So when we divide the teams, teams will be working on their focused work. I mean, it can be a future stories, anything which is related to project or project. So team will have their focused work. So when they are working on their focused work, so it, it, it's not that they are working for same thing. Their product goal is similar, but their sprint goal is different. Correct. Okay, when, so we, when they are working in sprint. Right? Yeah. Even product backlogs would be different for different teams. Yeah, I mean, if they are working on different, I mean, sometimes in my case, my product backlog is same for both the teams, but yeah, their yeah. sprint goals are different. Yes. Yeah. Well, basing on the functionality is as much as the independent functionality, the team is the, the concern teams are working. We have less to work. Right. Yeah, and that's also, how the focus should be. That's how we need to plan the things. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, Santosh is uh, absolutely manage correct. Is not, we, but but manager is not ready to divide the team. So yes. one thing I would like to mention over here, we don't uh, work as per what manager says, right? Because manager is not the uh, ultimate person who calls the shot. Just an example. Why? Uh, are we uh, put in a project as a scrum masters because we are uh, the one who understands uh, the uh, agile or scrum better than others i mean i'm we are not saying that we are superior or expertise or all of that but what we are trying to say is we cannot uh, uh, say that uh, i mean uh, the scrum guide or maybe whatever a scrum master uh, the reason why scrum master is there to make people understand the rules of the games, right? Rules of the scrum game. So if someone is not obeying uh, to the rules or someone is not following the rules, that means we are here as a coach to make them understand that these are the uh, rules of the game and this is how you have to play. Just an example, if uh, we are playing a, a, a game of a cricket, and if uh, if uh, umpire says that wicket keeper should not be uh, standing behind the wickets and you stand near the boundary that is not possible right? right because we have some rules that we need to abide to uh Correct. sorry to in hi team sorry to interrupt i just need to see to your answer maybe you can as a scrum master you can guide your team you can tell your high high management like uh, you can divide your team according to scrum process but if still they are not listening you cannot do anything because that's their management call am i correct Lamia? because we, we as a coach we have explained them that as a as per scrum guide we, we can divide the team and there should be eight or nine members but if still the management yeah. is in reason because it's top of them we cannot fight with them and we need to live with the, that company that's right. Absolutely right we can't go and fight with the manager because he is a yeah one more approach what we can take here we can go with them and we can implement i mean we can live with that 14 member team after two three sprints 
we will know what is happening in the team. Okay, so we can have that reference data with us. So what is going good, what is not going good, everything we can have that reference data points with us and we can put forward our observations on that team, on that large team, and we can showcase it to the manager or management, whoever involved into that project. So this is what happening if we have a large team. If we divide uh, into multiple cohesive scrum teams, then you will see much improvement. I mean, these observations, that observations you have to put forward in front of management, and you should also explain them how can we overcome this, whatever observations you have done, and your solution is to have the cohesive teams, two scrum teams. So when you, you can inform them that let's implement these two scrum teams, if you are not resolving the observations, what I have done and what is happening at ground level, we always can come back. Agile is nothing but always inspect and adopt. It's not that we need to stick to one solution and we need to stop ourselves there. We have to experiment the things. If we fail, we'll come back. If manager yeah. is, management is not agreeing for two teams, let's go with one team, experiment it. If we are failing, we'll go with the alternate solution. And if we are failing in that alternative solution, we should look for other solution. So that's how we need to do in Agile. Yeah, you so I, I put your point here. Uh, sorry to say this. The what the management thinks is it's a failure of a scrum master. You're not able to handle it. They are not no, considering that, is, that. In that case, I think we should. It's our responsibility that we should educate them, right? That's what uh, the question is. Yes. The, yes. the main problem is coming up is the mindset has not been changed. They are not ready to change, yeah. uh, adapt to things. And the thing is, the customer is customer. Clients are looking yeah. for the agile, the agile. Uh, uh, kind of related projects and immediately the everything has been turned the tables has been turned the project manager is becoming the scrum masters but the putting the uh, label change with the old in the old bottle right so that is uh, where uh, i mentioned that it had the agility has to be driven from uh, top to uh, yes. down approach yes. and not from bottom up approach so mm -hmm. unless and until that happens we will get such friction and it is our duty to educate them and not command and control them to follow uh, something. Uh, as uh, Santosh rightly mentioned, right? And uh, I mean, I would disagree wherein uh, uh, Sankalp mentioned that uh, we should just live up to them and uh, try to do, do that. What we can do is, as uh, Santosh mentioned, we, we should tell them, let's try this out. We have tried your ways, but it's uh, these are the pros and cons of it let let us try with other way what i am trying to say okay and if the project manager doesn't want to attend it's up to him, it's up to him whether he want to attend it or attend the call or not but if he wants to understand what is going around in the team then he would have to attend and to logically bind uh, things we can always say that teams are working on different uh, sprint backlog or product backlog or whatever we may want to call and each team has got their own responsibilities uh, to take care of and that is the reason why to maintain uh, or uh, main, uh, have the uh, scrum values intact is why or empiricism intact is why we have to um, uh, have two different teams and again to support this we'll have to say that we'll have to follow the rules of the game right we cannot uh, break the rules just because we want uh, uh, to uh, pick some things and uh, drop some things uh, as per our convenience. But it, it depends upon different environments and different cultures, which is in the organization. Yeah. It also uh, depends on it is, yeah. a, uh, it is a combination. Of, I, I, it is a often, teamwork. Like I, as Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, everyone have to involve in the implementation of Agile in any yes. organization. As only a Scrum uh, Master, we cannot change the complete organization exactly. if they are not ready for change. So it's a team effort. Everyone should show that interest to change the mindset. Yes. So that's how it will happen. And one example I can give is in my organization when I have joined, uh, when we estimate the stories, they were not considering QA estimation. So when I propose that to have QA, uh, QA also need to estimate their effort on that story, they were not ready for that. They wanted to follow the old practice that they only wanted to consider development efforts, not QA efforts. So then I said, okay, let's go with that. 
after four or five sprints, I've shown them the result, the data points, what I've observed without QA estimates, what is happening on the ground. So before to this call, I had a discussion on the QA estimates with my product owners and delivery managers. Now they have agreed when I've showed the data points. Now from next sprint, we are going to have the QA estimates for each and every story. So that's how we need to leave it for them uh, when they are not ready for change. And after some point of time, we have to showcase it to them, our observations and the data points, what is happening on the ground. Then obviously they will listen to us and they'll come back to us. Right. I think uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, cover rest of the things because we are already uh, running out of time. To yeah, I have only 15 minutes time. I have to, I have to, I have to stop, please. Please continue. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I see that people are already dropping, so I don't want uh, people to uh, just uh, uh, drop because of we are running out of time. So let's uh, continue uh, with uh, just last two things are left. So let's continue and uh, finish it off. Yes. Please. All right. Next is how part. So uh, how do we measure the performance of a project manager or a scrum master? So uh, when we say that a project manager is doing a great job, when your team is delivering within your scope, uh, within your time, within the given uh, with the given staff or within your budget or less than your budget. So that is when we say that your project manager has done a great job as per the uh, leadership that nothing has uh, uh, creeped out of the limitations. Uh, everything is uh, within the timeline scope uh, and within the project context is when we say that a project management manager has done a great job. But how do we measure uh, the uh, performance of a scrum master? I know this is a very uh, vast topic or a big topic in itself. How do we measure the performance of a scrum master? We would be just covering uh, the highlights of it. If you want, we can have a separate discussion or separate session on this. But just to uh, give the uh, gist of it, how do we measure the performance of a, a scrum master? And it is very uh, uh, contradicting or maybe very surprising thing to say. If a, a scrum, uh, scrum master's dependency is very less, on team, if a team is very uh, less dependent on a scrum master, that means a scrum master is doing a great job. Most of you are uh, if people who are new to this uh, role would disagree. How is that possible? That means your team team has become self organizing. That means your team is uh, self sufficient, cross functional. They understand the scrum uh, 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 values and principles, and hence there is a less dependency. When there is a less dependency, then uh, that means a scrum master has done a great job. Right, so that is how it is. If uh, if the team is self organizing and if a uh, team is uh, if team uh, teams effectiveness is very high, that means team is performing well and there is a transparency and team is maintaining that empiricism means the team effectiveness is really good. And if the uh, team uh, is uh, having a progressive agile metrics, I am not saying progressive means perfect. That that doesn't mean that your charts or report should show how uh, a bookish uh, report should uh, be like, but it is showing a progress. It could be spike ups and downs can happen. That means your team is doing a great job. If there is a single line or no improvement or there is no spike, no surprises, and if it's showing a perfect uh, uh, report or a chart as per your uh, as per your book, that means your team is not uh, doing a great job. That means as a scrum master, you're not doing a great job. So I would encourage people as a scrum master, we should not worry if there is a, if there is a spike in the graph, right? That there has to be a spike. That means your team is uh, forming, storming, uh, performing in in that stages, right? So your agile metrics should be progressive enough. And you are uh, driving that agility at an organization level. When you see that agility happening at an organization level, by how we can say that uh, at organization level, we are driving this agility when the leadership understands 
the the agile ways of working and when we we spoke about leadership uh, showing lot of friction right why are they showing friction because they are not used to this way of working earlier so it is uh, when they understand this way of working when they show this agility when they bring in this agility uh, uh, within them uh, out of them is when we say we have done a great job as a scrum master so this is how we measure the performance as a scrum uh, of a scrum master in a nutshell we can talk about it in the next session in details if you want we can have a separate session but for a project manager a uh, uh, performance is measured if the project uh, uh, team is doing a great job within the project context if your customer is giving you good nps good uh, uh, rating and good uh, uh, i mean uh, happy uh, in terms of uh, i mean customer satisfaction is good is when a, a project manager has done a great job whereas for scrum master it is bit different uh, it depends upon your team's performance it depends upon your team's effectiveness it depends upon your team's collaboration if all of these things are good is when you say you have done a, a great job as a scrum master and the last thing that i would like to cover over here is the expertise uh, of both the roles what are the skill set required or what is the expertise needed for these roles so for project manager negotiation skills scheduling skills or uh, technical expertise risk management uh, or management these are the top skills i felt uh, it would be needed it should be required by a project manager because he is going to negotiate on budget because he is going to negotiate or talk about scheduling because uh, he is going to give solution or taking care of deliverables uh, uh, technically because he is going to take care of risk management these are the top skills uh, that are required for a project manager which again lies within the uh, context of a project whereas for a scrum master it is like coaching mentoring training facilitating we spoke about all of this right because we get so many challenges uh, in terms of uh, managing team dynamics or uh, getting team uh, collaborate with each other or making them understand uh, certain things uh, in terms of in the context of agile or in context of scrum is why these are all the different hats uh, that scrum master or agile coach wears and these are the different skill set that are required the, the coaching mentoring training facilitating and behavioral all interpersonal skills why those are required to get the scrum values or agile values uh, within the team get that uh, psychological safety or uh, uh, give that safe environment give that uh, openness trust and all of these these are all the things that uh, a, a typical human centric things that we uh, a scrum master has to deal with that is the reason why behavioral or interpersonal skills are also very important so these are the different um, expertise or uh, skill set required by a project manager and scrum master so next time when someone asks you the difference between both the roles or someone tells you to take up uh, the roles in interchangeably this is how you can convince or this is how you can think through you try to understand why what and how part of it so that you can convince others as well to uh, make sure that these two roles are not same to make sure the responsibilities are different so that's all i have for today uh, anything uh, anyone would like to uh, add as a closing statement thank you or, thank you all right i think uh, we had a very good uh, session this time very good discussion uh, looking forward uh, for your support and uh, we would be uh, coming up with more session uh, every friday uh thank you so much everyone for joining and uh, have a very uh, good weekend thank you